Hello again and in this video I'm going to be exploring the subjects of mindset and how to empower your staff so that they can manage stress, how they can cope and how they can be so much more resilient basically so you can create a workspace where all of your staff are able to show up and perform at their optimal best. So I'm going to come at this from a coaching perspective and so I'm going to share with you some of the models that I use, some of the filters that I look through when I'm working with someone and helping coach someone to manage stress. So let's start off with something which might be a little bit provocative, a little bit challenging. Stress doesn't exist. It's not real. Now, you might think, okay, if that's the case, why, Steve, why have you put together a whole series of working stress-free? Why do you run a stress management business? But let's just think about this. If you're experiencing stress, and you might have heard people say, you know, I have a lot of stress. Um, I've got loads of stress. I always say to people that say things like that, I go, well, well, well give it to me. Hand, hand it over. And they look at me as if I'm weird, you know, as if I'm saying something which is alien. And they go, well, what do you mean? I go, well, if you have stress and you don't want stress, give it to me. So stress isn't a thing. It's not real. It's not tangible. Stressing is. Stressing is different. Stressing is the verb. People have to do the process of stressing, and they do it with their thinking, which is why mindset is, is the key to resolving stress in the workplace. We think in two forms. We think in visual images. We all imagine things. There's nothing weird and wrong with that. And we all talk to ourselves. And it's the thinking, it's the way we imagine things, and it's the talking that creates all of the emotional state that people experience in the body that they call stress. So, you know, I've worked with thousands of people and I haven't yet met one person who has stress, but I've met thousands of people that are doing stress. Now, this is important because once you understand how people do stress, then it becomes so much easier to teach them to stop doing it. That, that's the key to this is learning and becoming aware of how you do stress so that you can stop doing it. And that's what I'm going to cover during these videos. And I'm going to split this video into a couple of smaller videos. And in this first video, I'm going to be talking about the models. In follow-on videos, I'm going to be talking and sharing with you some of the techniques that I promise. Some very simple, very effective, very powerful techniques that you can use straight away so you can experience for yourself how you can change the way you feel by changing the way you think. And... And I want you to get something else as well before we, we really get into this. It's not about teaching people techniques and having to use techniques for the rest of their life. Far from it. Um, that's, that's not empowering people. That's attaching them and, and disabling them and by making them dependent upon the techniques. What we're looking to do is to make people aware of how they're creating stress, take the responsibility for what they're doing, teach them how to stop it, by using techniques and then practicing those techniques until they become new, beha new behaviors. In the last video, I got you, if you watch that video, to clasp your hands, notice how it felt, and to try something new. And that's what this is like. You know, as you practice new techniques, you're doing them consciously, with practice repetition, they become new behaviors. So Nobody has stress, but people are doing it. So let's now explore how people do stress. If you remember in the very first video of this series where I was talking about the 20% that makes the difference, and I gave the example of two teachers, and all the conditions out there, the working conditions were the same for both teachers, and one of them was experiencing stress and one wasn't. Okay, so we're going to look at the difference between those two. And I said that the person who was experiencing stress had a, uh, an impoverished mindset and the person who was calm, was capable, was more relaxed, they had a more empowered and a more enriched mindset. So they had learned how to do things different to this person. So it's never the outside, it's how we are processing what's going on external. So for example, uh, let's give a specific example. A manager comes along, hands down uh, a piece of work, a report needs to be in tomorrow, and 
There are two people doing the work. One with an impoverished mindset and one with an enriched mindset. This person will be going into their head. They'll be thinking about all of the challenges they might be facing, how they don't have time to do this, how it's not going to be right. So they'll be imagining all sorts of things and talking to themselves and creating the feelings in their body. This person will be doing something different. Now, they may still be thinking the same thoughts as the person who's experiencing stress, but it's the way they're thinking those thoughts that are different. And I'm going to explain this by sharing a personal story. When I first got into coaching, um, it, it was by accident, really. I was watching a TV program. I was watching Clive Anderson Talks Back. I don't know if any of you guys can remember that. But this was about 21, 22 years ago. And uh, he was interviewing Tony Robbins. And Tony, I'm sure most of you know, is, a, is an incredible life coach. And Tony was on the screen and he was enthusiastic. He was motivated. Hi, I'm Tony Robbins. And doing what Tony does. And I remember watching him and thinking, well, do you know what? I'm so stressed and so anxious in my life. And I'd love to have some of this guy's confidence and his motivation. So I'd read a couple of Tony's books. I remember going to my library, getting the books out of the, the library and Awaken the Giant Within. And I flipped through the pages and I had all my notes throughout the book. And I suddenly realized that I'd taken notes. I'd read the book, but I hadn't done anything any of the techniques and throughout the book Tony says stop what you're doing stop what you're reading and do the techniques it just dawned on me that I'd read it it goes back to something I was talking about earlier that we can know something but if we don't know how to do it we don't really know it so I stopped went to one of the techniques and it asked you to think about something that you've been worrying about I had a whole list of things that I was worrying about so I chose one thought about it made a visual image of it, was talking to myself about it and started to feel the stress, even though I wasn't, I wasn't in the situation. The situation that I was thinking about wasn't happening. I was just creating it in my mind. The technique was really simple. It just simply got me to step out of the image in my mind, push it off into the distance. The image went further off into the distance and notice what happens. And I remember this moment really clearly because suddenly the emotional experience dropped. On a zero to 10 scale of stress, and it's called a, these are called subjective units of distress. Most people, when they use what's called a SUD scale, they go from one to 10. But that presupposes it can never get down to zero. So we, we always calibrate from zero to 10. When I was thinking the thoughts about one of my projects, I was at about a seven and I was sitting at home. I wasn't even involved in the in the project. It was of an evening. But I could still think about it and still experience the seven. But when I stepped out of the picture in my mind and pushed it off into the distance, got some distance from the problem, the emotional intensity dropped down to a two. For me, it was an enlightening experience. It, it made me realize there was so much I didn't know about how the mind operates. And in the exercise I'm going to teach you a little bit later on, I'm going to teach you how to change the way you think so you can still process things, still think about things, but you don't have to experience the same emotional intensity. The person who has got the empowered mindset, the enriched mindset, they've learned to literally distance themselves from their problems. They've learned to think in particular ways where they can still process what's going on outside, but they're not experiencing the overwhelm. Whereas the person who's got the impoverished mindset, they haven't yet learned how to do that. Can you see the difference? So this is the difference between knowing about something and actually doing it. So in the second part of this video, in the smaller chunks I'm going to give you, there are going to be some great techniques, but you have to do them to experience them. There's one other thing I'd like you to just sit with and just reflect upon and just consider in relation to the two teachers. The teacher with the impoverished mindset, and, and by the way, I really want to emphasize that doesn't mean they're not as smart or as intelligent as the other person. It just means that the way they're seeing things isn't as enriched as the person who can cope. This person sees the world as an external world that creates their internal experience. They're seeing the workplace demand or change or the 
support and relationship that they have with their managers as being the cause of their experience. It's an outside in created world. The person with the more enriched mindset, they see it in a completely different way. External still happens, but it's their internal which creates their experience. It's an inside out created world. Now, that's a model and a concept that for some people it takes a little bit of time to sit with because people will go, yeah, yeah, hold on. Yeah, but it's my boss or it's the work. No, that's the cause of it. The cause can happen, but it still has to go through the filters of our thinking. That's internal. And that can take a little bit of time for people to really get as a concept. They, they'll actually get it and go, yeah, I get that. I see that. But actually put it into practice is another thing. So sit with that as a concept. Hopefully you get it straight away. And if you don't, you will. You just sit with these ideas, reflect upon them. And it makes the difference because once somebody really gets that it's an inside out created world, nothing externally needs to change, but their experience of it can be completely different. Let's explore the mind. So the first thing I want to say about mindset is that it isn't. It's not set. The mind is very flexible. We, we now know about neuroplasticity, about the ability of the brain to reorganize. The neurons in the mind are completely disconnecting and reconnecting every time you have a new experience and new thought. It's happening every second of every day. This is good news because it means you can always change your mind about something so that if somebody hasn't yet learnt something, they can learn it, it becomes imprinted and it can then become a new behaviour. That includes being able to cope and to be more resilient. Above all, it includes teaching people how to stop stressing. Those are pathways in the brain that the brain gets used to operating. It becomes, think of it this way, an unconscious competence for many people. Stressing is a skill. It's an accomplishment. You probably know someone who's really good at it. And they're probably not doing it on purpose. They're not even aware they're doing it sometimes. But they've, they've learned to think in a particular way. And it's now just become an automatic, unconscious, learnt skill. So it's a bit like tying a shoelace we can not teach them how to not learn how to tie their shoelace you, know, you can't unlearn something but you can make it redundant and that's the way to do this we teach people how to stop doing the stressing and then we teach them how to be able to cope and to be more resilient and to be more calm here's the mind okay this was given to me by one of our clients represents the thinking so Inside of all the books of knowledge is everything you've ever learned, all your experiences, all your behaviors, all your beliefs, all your values, everything you know inside these two pounds of fat, two pounds of fat, the consistency of warm butter. Have a worry thought. That kicks off more worry thoughts. The more worry thoughts we have, if we're thinking externally and thinking about things and getting fretted and upset and anxious and worry, it creates a cascade effect up here. Now, <clears throat> I don't know about you, but I've noticed this, that the mind is connected to the body. So it's the thinking that then generates all the emotional intensity of the body. So I want you to think of the body as a container. Okay, so this is my mug. It is an outside world outside inside world when it comes to me and my coffee in the morning external coffee helps me to feel good otherwise i am crabby until i get my coffee the body think of it as a container 15 trillion cells <clears throat> if someone's having anxious worry traumatic stressful thoughts they're releasing stress chemistry and the more stress chemistry there is in the body it sends signals back to the to the mind and to the brain there must be a problem keep the worrying going. So one of the keys to understanding how to change mindset is recognizing that it's a combination between teaching people to, to let this happen. You see what happens when you leave the mind? The thoughts settle. However, the chemistry in the body is still there. Sometimes it takes a while for this to be dissipated, to be cleared out. So it's always a combination of teaching people how to have more of a quiet mind and clearing up the stress chemistry. 
as the stress chemistry gets dissipated from here, that has a profound effect on the thinking. Okay, so I'm going to teach you how to do that in, in the latter part of this video. I'm going to have my coffee now. The person who's stressing has evolved a competency. They are good at it. They're good at it. It's natural. They're not doing it on purpose, necessarily. But let's look at that as, as a concept, as a model. Okay, uh, and you've probably heard of this, the four levels of learning. If you haven't, I'm going to go through them very quickly. A good example of this is when someone's starting to learn to drive a car. At the very beginning, the lowest level is what's called unconscious incompetence. The people at this level have no idea how bad they're going to be at something. They get in the car, drive for the first time, and generally they're not very good, so they move up a level and they become consciously incompetent. They're now aware consciously of how incompetent they are. Now, at this point, some people drop out and go, I can't do this. But others, millions in fact, persevere, and it moves up to another level, which is conscious competence. And it's at this point where they can do it, they can drive, you know, they've got the, the pedals and the wheel and the indicators, they can do it, but they still have to think about doing it. And it's at that point they pass the test and released onto the roads. Practice things consciously, whether that's a simple exercise with the hand, driving a car, or consciously practice worrying, or fretting, or being anxious, and it moves to another level, which is unconscious competence. A part of the mechanism of the mind takes it over and goes, I'll do this for you. And for most people, stressing is an unconscious competence. How do we change an unconscious competence that someone has learned and they don't want to do it? Well, we have to move up to the next level. And most people that are aware of the four levels of learning <clears throat> aren't aware there's actually five. The fifth level is the level of mastery. It's the level where you have an understanding of what's happening at an unconscious competence level. It's called conscious unconscious competence. At the level of conscious unconscious competence, you're able to look at what it is that you're doing unconsciously and interrupt it and interrupt it so that the pathways in your mind, the behaviors that you've learned to do, don't just happen automatically without any conscious thought. And in the next couple of videos, I'm going to teach you some really simple techniques which will help you to interrupt some of the learned stress patterns that people have. And I just want to have a very brief conversation because I don't want this, one, this video to be too long about the types of methodologies, the approaches that I use as a coach to help people to change unconscious learned behaviors. There's never one way. It's never just one approach. There's never one methodology. Certainly never found that to be the case. And I've worked with some great, great coaches, some incredible people, some people at the top of the game, and they're very much the same. They, they approach it in many different ways. So as I mentioned, one of the earlier videos is never just a CBT approach, is never just a mindfulness approach or an NLP approach. The most effective approach is a blended approach where you get people to become aware of what they're doing, interrupt it using one approach, and maybe have a quiet mind using mindfulness, using a little bit of NLP to teach them how to do mindfulness. So it's about coming about it from a number of different ways. And I'm going to teach you a couple of te techniques, really simple techniques that you'll be able to use to help people to have a quieter mind and a calmer body. And above all, release all the stress chemistry because it's a time in our lives when there's so much uncertainty so much change that a lot of people are walking around marinating in adrenaline, cortisol, noradrenaline. It's, it's time to release that. So I'm going to teach you how to do that. So I'm not going to spend any more time talking about any of the other coaching models I use. Just a couple there. External world, internal world. Cause effect. When you get that it's an internally created world, that's transformational. When people get that Stressing is an unconscious competence. They're doing it and they can learn how to stop doing it. That could be transformation as well. So got any questions, comments, observations about anything I've covered in this video, please let me know. I will reply to them. 
and I'm now going to put together a couple of simple techniques and at the end of the next video or videos we'll see uh, there's going to be the opportunity for you to download a, a hypnosis recording, a meditation recording, something you can just pop on, listen to, and it will just help you to relax, help you to be calm and centered, grounded, able to take on anything. Thanks for watching.